Well, guys, I got a special treat for you guys today. I'm talking with two of my good friends now. <laughs> my boy, Big O, you know him as Jerry Ostrowski and his son, uh, one of the top recruits in the state of Oklahoma, Owen Ostrowski, uh, doing big things over there for Holland Hall. 6'2", 243 pounds, coming off the edge is a terror in the weight room and on the field. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that a little later. But first, let's go ahead and knock out the icebreaker, the pregame. As athletes, we both know we got to stretch it out, got to warm it up before we get into the hard, you know, athletic activities. So let's let's stretch it out. Pregame warm up. A couple of questions I'll ask you and then you guys answer. If you got a reason why, go ahead and tell me. But if not, we can keep it moving. First questions for you, Owen. All right. All so, right. NBA basketball, which player do you prefer, Steph Curry or Kyrie Irving? And tell me why. Uh, Kyrie, uh, pretty much just because I'm not a Warriors fan. <laughs> well, how did that come about? Most people are bandwagon fans and big fans of the Warriors. Or, or is it because of this is last season's uh, activities, you don't like the losing going on? Uh, I don't, I'm not a bandwagon. And I don't, so I'm not going to cheer for them. I'm mainly, I always cheer against them. There's never really been a time where I've cheered for them. All right, Big O, you knew I was going to come at you next. NBA. Uh, <laughs> All right, let's see. <laughs> Dr. J or Magic Johnson? Who are you going for? Uh, that's easy. That's Dr. J. That's what, that was 1983, one of the best years ever in Philadelphia sports history. <laughs> uh, Philadelphia 76ers beat the Lakers and Magic Johnson and Kareem Abdul Jabbar, Michael Cooper, whoever else you want to mention, and uh, won the world championship. So, definitely Dr. J. All right, next. I, I know this is a big wrestling family. I know the, and when I say wrestling, I don't mean the Oklahoma, you know, Oklahoma State traditional wrestling background. I'm talking about WWE wrestling. <laughs> so I want to present this question to you, Owen. All right. Back in the day, the, back in my day, the, the big time guys was The Rock and Stephen F. Austin. Stone Cold. Okay. Which one are you going for? Stone Cold. Definitely. <laughs> Why is that? He's just like all around in the ring, out of the ring. Like his act, like his acting and everything. He's just so cool. His character was awesome. Okay. All right. I feel you. I feel you. All Not right. Bad. Big Big O. Now, mm -hmm. who are you going for? Ric Flair or Hulk Hogan? Mm. That's easy. Four horsemen. Ric Flair. <laughs> oh, really? I mean, you can't, you you know, the guy that talks about, you know, you know. Styling and profiling, none of this, just all this. I mean, <laughs> we'll not right right it. In the because you, you know, Owen talked about talked about Stone Cold and his character, and like you say, it is one of the best characters ever. And some feel it is the best character ever in pro wrestling. Rick, you almost believed it. Like you almost like Rick really is that dude. Like that's how he lives. And um, so it, it's it's funny, and he'll tell you. He'll be the first to say. I live that way. That's why I have, you know, about four wives and a bunch of <laughs> a bunch of problems. But no, I have to say Ric Flair over Hulk Hogan. Yeah, and Ric Flair, I mean, dude survived a plane crash and, and lived mm -hmm. to, to I mean, that was like before he even got popular in the in the wrestling thing. So he, he's the man. All right, last question. Gonna kind of go into a musical category. Uh, Owen, on your side, uh, you, uh, social media wise, you kind of you kind of throw people off a little bit. So I didn't know where you're where you're leaning towards. So I kind of gave you a wide variety. So I give you two guys. I give you Drake, or I give you Jason Aldean. Who you who are you choosing? Uh, Jason Aldean, definitely. Really? <laughs> yeah. I listen to a lot. I listen to a lot of music, basically like a little bit of every genre. But country is definitely one of the main ones I listen to. I'm more of a Sam Hunt guy myself. I'm surprised he said I'm surprised he didn't say neither, but I guess you gotta pick one of them, right? You gotta choose one. You gotta choose one. What about what about you, Big O? Who you who are you listening to back in the day? Back in the day? Yeah. Tell me, tell me. It was, tell me it, was, it, was, it was early death, yeah, man. Run DMC, 
uh, LL Cool J. Um, I was listening to the Beastie Boys. I was listening to Public Enemy. I mean, if if it was Def Jam, that's what we're listening to. But I'm back from Philadelphia, so um, that was that Northeast sound, that East Coast sound back in the day. Um, I had this conversation the other day with Willie Wright. We are talking about rap music and that first group that kind of kicked it off for you. And for me, it was it was Run DMC. I mean, they had a song called, they have a song called Rock Box. And uh, me and my buddies used to listen to that while we were playing pool down in his basement. And it was like, wow, man, these guys are rapping over real instruments. And uh, I just kind of started it all, man. Oh, man, that's awesome. That's awesome. We're talking to Jerry Ostrowski and Owen Ostrowski, his son. Very uh, hot commodity coming out of Holland Hall for, for those guys. And, uh, and Owen, now, now that the pregame's over, we're getting to the tackle the hard questions. My first question to you is just a simple, why do you play the game of football? I know your, your dad was an NFL star back in the day, but I mean, there's, there's some pressure that goes along with it. But why do you play the game of football? It's it's the greatest game ever played. It's it's just like the team work. No, no other sport needs. There's twenty. There's eleven people on every phase of the ball. So offense, defense, special teams. So and in order for a team to be successful, every single, you need all eleven people on the field to be doing the right thing. And then the it's just the relationships you build along the way with other players, teammates, coaches. It, it, it's just it's it's the best. On the other side, for you, Big O, I mean, why why did you initially start playing the game? Because I was too big to play anything else. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I didn't play till seventh grade because we had weight limit football where I grew up, and I was like nine years old, and I was going to have to play with all the thirteen and fourteen year old kids, and my parents wouldn't let me play, so I played other sports like basketball and soccer and baseball and then when i got to seventh grade and school offered football i played football and then also uh switched over to wrestling along with baseball and um i'm kind of like i'm kind of like owen it's the one game that you play where you can actually work your way into a position there is a position for every person if you're willing to work and you're willing to, to listen and sacrifice and not be selfish you can play football and work yourself into getting on, on that field and um, that was always something to me that I really enjoyed. And again, also just the, the teamwork and that, 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 you know, that feeling you get when you achieve something in a group. There's nothing quite like it. Yeah, I feel you guys on that. There's, I mean, this it's the one of the one games where you, you would think, I mean, <laughs> you need everybody on that field to be successful. I mean, basketball, we all know if you got one superstar, he can kind of take over control of the game. And sometimes in football, you think there's that one player that can control the whole game, but even the quarterback needs that receiver to catch the ball. That running back needs that offensive line to create some holes on defense. You need somebody like the defensive tackle to heat up those two blockers so you can make a tackle as far as your linebacker or safety. So it's, it takes all 11. So I feel y'all on that. Uh, well, with that being said, Owen, uh, you, you're one of the top prospects in, in the state and, and you, you've got a lot of college looking at you and coming after you. But I mean, as far as role models and, and people that you've looked up, up to before you got on the field or when you're watching tape, who are some of the guys that you model your game off of? It could be college, could be the NFL. Who are some of the players that you look up to? Uh, first of all, my dad and my older brother, they're, they, uh, ever since I was little, they've always been, been two people I've looked up to and always wanted to be like uh, growing up, just the way they play and everything. It's, it's awesome to have uh, two older, two people in my family like that the, that are play, playing high-level football. So I've always wanted to be like and, uh, other than Other than family members, uh, the fullback from LSU, uh, Corey Carter, He's a, he's a, he's awesome. Just the way his, I've always been pretty attracted towards his attitude and energy into everything he does on and off the field. I try to bet being like him is all, like is what I've always wanted to be. 
Uh, Big O, I mean, you've you've watched this kid grow up for for a long time. I mean, is there anybody that you in your back in your playing days or the guys that you're watching currently on TV that you can see Owen that he plays kind of like and mirrors his game off of? I I watch him play, and I know this is a is a is the name of of a family that has a lot of success in the NFL, and people laugh at me, but I look at you know at Joey Bosa and the Bosa brothers and how they play the game. And it's not just a, you know, they're obviously they're talented. They're big, they're big men. They play well, they play with their hands, but there's a certain way they play. They play hard. They play tough football. They hustle to the ball. They run to the ball. And, and when I think about what he does playing defensive end, um, you know, I look at that, that. Those are kind of some of the guys that I think he, he plays like, I think that, uh, he, you know, his strength allows him to do a lot of things. Uh, then you got his athletic ability as well. And uh, I look at both Boses and, and see a lot of similarities. And, and it's funny if we can get into a little bit of a deep dive on that. A lot of people were expecting those two brothers to kind of top out at the NFL because of the fact that they've had all that coaching and that training before all the other guys. I mean, they thought, they saw – their ceiling was going to stop as soon as they got to the league because there was no much, no much more to teach them. They already knew everything. So as far as Owen coming into play, I mean, him having the advantage of having an NFL dad, what do you think about his ceiling and, and, and what's the, what's the possibilities of his growth going to the next level? Or is he, is, is there a possibility that he knows and has an advantage that he knows more than the other kids? Well, first and foremost, he's got an unbelievable mind. Um, and he's a smart, smart kid. Um, you put on top of being smart, he's got a, he's got a fuse in him to compete that most don't have. So you put intelligence and a willingness to compete together. Uh, that's dangerous in itself. And then you put his genetics, which his mom has a lot to do with. I swear if I ever write a book about, about athletics, it's going to be titled, you know, mom makes the difference. Um, and uh, obviously, he's been gifted, you know, he's been touched by God and been gifted by God with a tremendous amount of ability. But I think when you look at a lot of different players and you look at who makes it and who doesn't make it, there's a lot of kids in that line that all have ability. They've all, they all have athletic ability. They, have a, they can run fast, they're strong. But not all of them have the mindset to do it and not all of them have that switch. And it's a nasty switch that makes you want to compete and I think that's something that 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 Owen has that that a lot of don't you know they learn maybe some kids learn it over time but he's had it from a young young age I mean when he was in was he was in third grade football he had it it is something about him in competition um, he's not going to get he he doesn't want to get beat and if he does he's going to come back harder uh, even the next time so I think his intelligence and his his willingness to compete are probably the two biggest things he has besides general just good genetics. Speaking of those good genetics and, and, and what it takes to be successful on the field, a lot of people, you know, don't really think about this, the mentality that it goes to have to be successful on that football field, the confidence that goes with it. And as athletes, we kind of know uh, some some things that other people don't get a chance to know, especially as far as the jersey number. OK, now, Big O, you had the opportunity of getting that 5-5 retired for the University of uh, for the University of Tulsa here recently. Now, oh, and I, this is very interesting. The fact of the matter <laughs> is, sophomore year, I, I've been watching your tape. I've been check, checking you out on social media. Sophomore year, you rocked the 5-1. It was good. But junior year, you came out and put that uno on your chest and said you're the man. And we all know, when you step on a basketball court, the kid that's rocking number 23, that's the guy you don't want to be guarding. On a football field, the kid that's wearing number one, that's the guy that's coming off the bus first, and that's the man you need to watch out for. So, Owen, why wear the number one? Uh, I actually wanted to wear number three and or number five, and those were both taken. So I just so the only other single digit number left was one. I wanted to, that. That's pretty much about it. There's really no super cool reason other than I wanted to wear a single digit number just because I had never <laughs> done it before. <laughs> Man, you're telling me that, that that you just wanted like I know that that's the new trend going into the into college football. You know, all those Auburn defensive tackles and DNs are wearing those single digit numbers, and 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 
it's like, so, hey, if you're a big time recruit, then you're getting a single digit number. That means a lot. So, so it's all about the single digit, just looking cool. Uh, <laughs> Pretty much, except now is every single year I've changed numbers because freshman year I was 40, sophomore year I was 51. This year I was one or 72, a couple games. Um, so now I'm probably going to have to change again just to kind of keep up with that pattern. I don't know, man. You can't get no much better than number one. <laughs> yeah, you're not wrong. <laughs> well, speaking of uh, football and, and things, I've, I've seen you guys keeping up with, uh, with the weights and the training, trying to have a successful senior campaign. Uh, during this pandemic, it's been, uh, it's been an unusual situation, but how have you guys stayed uh, prepared for what's coming up in the fall? Um, you know, I was, I was fortunate enough to be at the University of Tulsa where I work and I was in these meetings and I'm listening to this stuff going on. I'm like, you know, we're getting ready to get to a situation where we're going to be shut down. And I've got a couple of boys that need a place to work out. And I was also thinking of their friends and some other people that, you know what, maybe it's kind of like Field of Dreams. You build it, maybe they'll come, right? So we went ahead and I had some weights already down at the, down at the, the lake, some, some plates that I brought back and I started, you know, trading this for this and moving this for this and peddling a little bit here and there. And then a week and a half later, all of a sudden I've got a fully functional gym in my garage. And um, so Owen and his brother could work out. Owen's friends, uh, teammates came over and I say teammates, it was a few of them because we did, things correctly. We, we had time spaced out to when people worked out. We washed with bleach between every workout. We did our social distancing and all that the best we could. But, um, you know, we ended up picking up a guy like Willie Wright who uh, called me and just was trying to find a gym. He's like, hey, man, I just need some place to work out. Willie, of course, went to TU. Um, he's now with the, with the Cleveland Browns. And uh, I said, Willie, I said, if you don't mind working out in my garage, man, I said, you can come over here, every, you know, as much as you want. And so now he's a member of it. Um, we were trying to find a name for our garage. Uh, I've got a young son who's nine, who's really, really gifted at art. And he drew us a mascot and everything else. We've named our garage a Gorilla Garage. And uh, we got a mascot on the wall. And uh, that's where you come get big, man. You hit them weights, slap them weights around and get big. So um, it's a really garage. Be honest, if I didn't have that garage, I don't know if I'd have made it. I'm just telling you, I sit in that garage for about 10 hours a day. It's oh, the best I've got. That's, that's awesome, man. The gorilla garage, man. So, <laughs> how, how, how does somebody get a membership? Is there a test you got to take? Is there, <laughs> you got to wash your hands before you enter? What's, what's, the, what's the rituals to your? Well, I think the first thing, and Owen will probably tell you, um, you've got to pass, you know, the group's got to approve you. Mm. Uh, whole group gets votes. I mean, it's kind of like once you're in, you're in, but if you leave, you can never get back. Um, so we've, uh, we've got a very exclusive, uh, group of people. Dion, I could talk to the rest of the crew to see if they'd let you in. Hey, I want to come on. Let your boy in. Let your boy in. I heard you. I heard you're a little bit fragile though, man. We get after it. So I know you're a little bit fragile, you know, but we can work with y'all. Y'all take care of me. Y'all take it easy on me. Won't we'll toughen you up for sure. We'll toughen you up. <laughs> Speaking of the weight room, Owen, I mean, it's been quoted as like an app. Literally, somebody wrote an absolute weight room terror. Now, with with everything that's gone on, and and we we've seen your videos on social media and Twitter, trust me, I'm a big fan of that. I, I used to grow up watching, you know, Taylor May from the safety from uh, USC and, and Brian Cushion and all those guys work out uh, in college. And I, I love that type of stuff. So what, what, what mentality do you take into the weight room? Uh, I, I know I'm doing it. I need to do it to go, go, go where I want to be later in, uh, in the future, go to go to the next level. You're going to have to put in the work. And so, that's just, I know that that's something I have to do. And I, if I'm going to do it, I'm not going to waste my time. I'm going to put in as much effort as I can to get the most out of it while I can. 
So what's so what's those numbers looking at? I mean, I I, I know we're we're not really. I don't, I don't know if I'm trying to get into privileged information here. But That's membership. That's membership only, Dion. <laughs> I can't get a little a little insight on what those that bench. I told you. I told you. I will talk to the guys and see if we can get you in. <laughs> then we'll let you know. All right. Uh, I, I have to find out the hard way. I have to find out the hard way. <laughs> Speaking of the the hard way, uh, uh, now you decided, and and you, you your older brother went to Hall and Hall, and you went to Hall and Hall. Now, there's some guys think that the private school route is, is sometimes a little bit of a disadvantage uh, during the recruiting process. But you do you feel that way? And Jerry, you can chime in on this as well. Why did y'all decide to go to Hall and Hall and, and go the private school route? Um, you want that one up first, Owen, or you want me to take it? Uh, you can take it first. Well, I'll take it, and you can build on this. You, the most important thing you have in your life is your mind. Um, we've been blessed that my kids have had the opportunities uh, that they've had to go to Holland Hall. I consider it the best educational school in the state of Oklahoma as far as primary school, middle school, and, and, and high school. And, um, you know, you football, football takes you so far. I mean, it's not something that's going to last forever. Very, very few people make it. We've talked about this all the time, but the thing that you cannot have taken away from you is your mind and how you think and how you're able to write and do math and those types of things. Colin Hall's an amazing situation, and I, I will do it again. Um, I, would, I would definitely give up some of the, the advantages you get from playing 6A football to, to be able to send my kids to a, an educational uh, place like Holland Hall. It's just, uh, I just don't think there's anything like it in the state. Owen, how to pose that question to you? you think it's an advantage or a disadvantage going to private school as far as football and, you know, with your education? It's that, I think it's, I take it as an advantage just because academic wise, like my dad said, uh, it's, it's the best place you can be in the state of Oklahoma to learn. And that, and that, it, and that takes you a lot of places because if, because you can have all the ability in the world, but if you're if you're not if you're if you're not if you don't have the grades or anything, you, schools aren't going to want you. That's one of the, that's like the first thing they they uh, they try to find out if school wants to recruit you is how how smart you are and how your grades are and everything. And then also just the the people the people that I'm around every day, the coaches and all the support I get and help from everybody there. It, it's I wouldn't trade that for anything. Speaking of those classes, I, I know during this quarantine, there's a lot of online schooling going on. <laughs> How has that been? Uh, it's been it's been all right. It's been I missed. I actually a couple weeks in, I I was thinking, and I I never thought I'd say it, but I miss being at school just because it, it's not it's not the same when you're not with all your all your classmates and every all your friends and everything. It's a little it's not as fun fun to learn when you're just doing it in your room by yourself. I feel you on that, but I mean, speaking from uh, experience, get used to some of those online classes, <laughs> especially in college athletics. They got us doing a lot of them just because of mm -hmm. practice time and the way you <laughs> the way you have to move around. So get used to it, my man. Well, Big O, a question that I've always wanted to ask you, and now it seems like the perfect time. How did a kid from Pennsylvania end up in Tulsa, Oklahoma. It's funny, I, get, I told that story today. Um, we were talking with a um, with an assistant coach on the telephone. And, um, you know, the reason I got down here is when, when I played at the University of Tulsa, uh, we had 20 to 25 um, kids uh, from Pennsylvania or Canada on this roster. And we had a couple of gentlemen, they were both brothers, they were both from Western Pennsylvania. Um, they thought it was very important. Or, and that's kind of how it happened back then. Tulsa with the oil boom and then Western PA, Central PA, huge shale beds. There's a lot of oil up there as well. So Pittsburgh guys, Western PA guys came to Tulsa. Tulsa guys went up there. They built relationships. And uh, these two guys were, uh, were real adamant about making sure there was Pennsylvania and Canadians on the team. And um, uh, they helped they helped the uh, the recruiting situation and helped uh, fund all the, the recruiting trips. And Mark Thomas, who was my offensive line coach, uh, he played at Penn State, uh, was from Western PA. And uh, it was funny. I, 
I always wanted to go to Penn State growing up. It's the only place I ever wanted to go. And uh, they invited me to be a, a walk-on. They had a top 10 walk-on per- thing that they had every year. Um, and they celebrated it, kind of like the 12th man at, at Texas AM. and m And I was like, I can't do that to my parents. I've got scholarship offers. So if I couldn't go to Penn State, I went and played for a guy that went to Penn State. So that's how I ended up down here. And, you know, we had a lot of great players from the state of Pennsylvania, guys like Gus Farratt and uh, many, many others. So when it was all said and done with the NFL, I mean, what, what led to that decision to come back to Tulsa and uh, raise a family out here? I think Owen's going to understand this when he goes to school. And I think, Dion, it's the same reason why you're sitting in Tulsa and you're not in Dallas, Texas. Um, it's one of those things where where you go to school, those are going to be your lifelong friends. You still keep in contact with a couple of high school guys. But where you go to college is where your friends are. And um, – I'm an only child. I knew I wasn't going to go back home. Uh, I ended up marrying a girl from Muskogee, Oklahoma. But I always enjoyed Tulsa, and I love the people out here. The people are awesome. Um, lots of similarities between PA and, and, and Oklahoma. Tough people, blue-collar people, hardworking people. And um, it's just one of those things where I had a lot of friends out here, wanted to stay here, and, uh, you know, the rest is history, so to speak. Speaking of college, Owen, you're about to embark on that journey as your your, your senior year is coming up here pretty soon. Uh, tell us a little bit about some of the people that are interested in you right now. Um, so I have offers from Army, Navy, Hawaii, New Mexico. Um, so those are the FBS offers I have now. And then I have some FCS offers from Abilene Christian, Drake, um, Central Arkansas, and then some D2 offers from Central Oklahoma, Northeastern State, and uh, Washburn University. So, I mean, with that, with all those offers, you know when you were just going to, you know, finalize and kind of come down to making a decision? Uh, I'm not really going to make any. I'm, I've talked to my dad about this quite a bit. We're not going to decide anything until we're able to go on the campuses and visit and everything uh, and be able to see what, what that program's all about. So with all this coronavirus stuff, it's been a little difficult just because not you can't do any of that. But uh, I still have a year and a half to make a decision and know where I'm going to school. So I'm not in any hurry right now. Well, I mean, if you if you do, when the time comes and you do want a safe place for you to make that announcement, the Ford High School Weekly would be graciously you know, happy to have you. All right, I'll I'll keep that in mind. (laughs) All right, appreciate it. Uh, Big go. We haven't uh, even touched on the fact that you're a uh, NFL uh, alum and and a a, a superb athlete that uh, you know got to play a lot of years with the Buffalo Bills. I mean, tell us some 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 of the great stuff about the NFL and and your time there. Well. You better have another three or four part show if we're going to get into all these stories about playing in the league. But um, no, it's a it's a very demanding job. It's a very high stress job. It's a very very you run really hot for for a certain period of time and then it's over. Um, you know, I'm going to be 50 this year. I got some bumps and bruises. I have a total knee replacement in my left knee. But these are all things that I would I would trade. I would I would somebody asked me the other day if I play again. I got to sign up right now. Give me a paper. And I'll sign up because uh, it was the greatest experience of my life. I mean, playing in the NFL, playing in front of 80,000 people, uh, the competition, just everything that goes with it. Uh, pretty, pretty cool deal, um, to say the least. But um, even as great as, as it was, I can still tell you more about my college days and the four years I had at the University of Tulsa with those guys and those teammates that I'm still friends with today. I can tell you those those stories and those things much, much more than I can the NFL. The NFL to me was like a blur, but I'll never forget that Tulsa time. And um, it was very, very special. One thing I wanted to, to you know, get your opinion on is, is playing in the Super Bowl. I mean, it seems like a, an achievement that everybody wishes they had. And, and at, once you get into that lane, that's the ultimate goal. But I mean, how was that with the, those, those Super Bowls with the Buffalo Bills? Uh, I was at the last one. I was on the practice squad at that time. So the Super Bowl was a really, really fun experience for me because I didn't have to go to any of the individual meetings at night. I just had to go to the team meeting. 
it was a good time. So never got to actually play. Uh, watch the halftime show. That was kind of fun. <laughs> what was the halftime show? Oh, uh, it was a country. It was in Atlanta. So it was the Super Bowl, the last Super Bowl where the Bills went in up at halftime, and then they ended up uh, losing to the Cowboys for the second time. But it was uh, it was country, man. It was like Travis Tritt, Tanya Tucker. I think Brooks and Dunn were there. So uh, got to see a little bit of that. I don't know any of those people. I, Dion, I wouldn't expect you to. Especially after, especially after what you admitted to the other day that you had no idea that Ahmad Rashad actually played football and was married to Mrs. Huxtable. We'll leave it at that. Well, like who, like who knew that that guy played for the Minnesota? He was on NBC, NBA. Like who knew he was an all pro wide receiver for the Vikings? That's your world, Dion. You need to know that stuff, man. Hey. You know that's 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 what you do. There's only oh, there's only so much knowledge I can keep in this head, you know. So there was like yeah, that was that was Michael's that was Mike's guy, man. Ahmad Rashad was Mike's that was Mike's guy. That's why he's in that thing. <laughs> well, guys, I, I want to thank you so much for for joining us. It was an honor to to talk with you guys. And during the season, we're gonna have to catch up again, especially see what these numbers are looking like in the, not only in the weight room, but also on the field, Owen. So con wow. good luck with your upcoming season. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thanks, Big O, for, uh, for joining us as well. Yeah, we appreciate you. Thank you very much. Um, the, the, boy, the boy gets the, uh, the recognition he gets because of his work ethic. So I'm proud of him. And, and we're looking forward to seeing some more of that work ethic on the football field this fall.